This is the engine that produces one of the greatest sounds known to man. It's the power plant for one of the most notorious cars in all of racing. And it earned the Nissan Skyline arguably the greatest nickname in automotive history. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we are taking a look at the RB26 and why it is so good. Let's talk about it. As a kid, I watched Too Fast, Too Furious, and I absolutely drooled over Brian's R34 Skyline GTR from the opening sequence. And one of the biggest reasons this car is so sought after is the RB26 engine. Before we jump right in to talk about this notorious power plant, just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I post new car content like this every single week, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Now before we can get into the details of the engine, we've got to understand a little bit about the history of the infamous Skyline name. The first Skyline GTR was debuted in 1969, designed by Shinichiro Sakurai. When the Prince Motor Company tasked him with building a race car based on their Skyline chassis, he decided to get his hands a little dirty. He did this by dropping in a detuned version of the S20 six-cylinder engine from the S380 race car. The S20 was a dual overhead cam, two-liter inline-six engine that produced about 160 horsepower. With this engine and the semi-trailing arm suspension setup, the first GTR would go on to rack up 49 wins in the Japanese Touring Car Championship. And in doing so, it earned itself the nickname Hakosuka. Hako meaning boxy and suka meaning skyline. Hakusuka. The GTR would be redesigned in 1971 as the Skyline GTR Coupe. Being both shorter and wider than the previous generation, the 71 Coupe was a legitimate sports car. To round out the 70s, Shinichiro would give a final redesign to the GTR with some American fastback inspiration. Thanks to a Japanese TV series about a couple of teenage lovebirds, this generation would go on to be known as the Ken Mary Skyline. Nissan was only able to produce 197 of these cars due to a little thing called the gas crisis. At this point, we're going to jump forward into the mid-80s when in 1985, the R31 Skyline was released. This model of the Skyline was offered with the first iteration of the RB engine series, in the form of the RB20. The GTS models of the R31 generation would be offered with a turbo option, the RB20 DET. So let's break down what this engine name means, shall we? The RB is the engine name designation from Nissan. The 2O refers to the engine being a displacement of 2.0 liters. The D refers to dual overhead cams. The E refers to electronic fuel injection. And the T means that it came with a turbocharger. If you want to know more about how an engine works, take a look at the video right here where I give my detailed explanation. Now, the R31 was released with some lukewarm reception. There was no GTR model, and the Skyline diehards were not overly impressed with this design. Naganori Ito, the designer of the R31, would go back to the drawing board with two goals in mind. Redesign the Skyline in honor of Sakurai-san and absolutely dominate the Japanese Touring Car Championship Class A division. In 1989, the R32 Skyline was released with the infamous RB26 DETT. With both a larger bore and a longer stroke than the previous RB20, this car would make 276 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque. Due to a gentleman's agreement at the time amongst Japanese car makers, this engine was limited to 276 horsepower and was easily modifiable to make way more power than that. The turbochargers originally supplied with this engine had ceramic turbine wheels, which would become a problem when trying to make really high horsepower on these engines, but we'll talk about that a bit later. The R32 GTR would be entered into the Japanese Touring Car Championship Class A division the exact division that it was designed to dominate. Out of the 29 races in which it was entered, the R32 GTR won every single one of them. The blue calsonic livery R32 would go on to win both the 1990 and the 1994 JTCC championships, making it the most famous and recognizable R32 ever. It went to the 24-hour race at the Nürburgring and won. The 24-hour race at Spa and won. The 24-hour race at Macaw 
and it won that too. In the year 1990, an independent racing team in Australia by the name of Gibson Motorsports got their hands on an R32 Nismo race car. They proceeded to modify the hell out of this thing, and it would go on to win the Australian Touring Car Championships in 1990, 1991, and 1992. These absolutely crushing victories would lead to the acquisition of a brand new nickname, Godzilla. In 1995, the Skyline would be redesigned as the R33 GTR. A lot of people love the R32 and the R34, but they like to hate on the R33 for being fat and stumpy. But I actually like the R33 the best out of all of them. If you like the S14 240SX body shape, which a lot of people do, then I feel like you have to like the R33. I mean, they're very similar and they were designed in the same era at Nissan. Now I'm just ranting, but let's get back into the RB26. The R33 would use very nearly the same RB26 DETT as the former R32, although the R33 solved a lot of the oiling issues that the previous generation experienced. This engine corrected the R32's weak oil pump drive by going to a wider collar. This would prevent the oil pump gears from failing under heavy load and would keep the engine lubricated and reliable for those 24 hour races. When the R34 Skyline GTR was released in 1999, the RB26 was improved yet again. The old ceramic journal bearing turbos were swapped out for the steel ball bearing type. This would improve the efficiency, reliability, and modifiability of the engine as a whole. This is probably the most notorious generation of the Skyline here in the States, as it is still not available for import and won't be available until 2024. And when the first models are available for import, you can bet your ass that they will be way overpriced. All of the hype from the Fast and the Furious to the Need for Speed series has jacked our perception of the price of these things to the moon almost as high as Doge. But that's enough about the Skyline, now let's talk about the details of this engine and why it is so good. First of all, the RB series engines feature the same construction type as their Toyota six-cylinder rivals. A cast iron engine block, forged internals, an aluminum cylinder head, and twin turbos. And also like their Jay-Z counterparts, the RB engines were over-engineered and then detuned for release to the public. These engines came standard with a fully forged crankshaft, rods, and pistons. So when you're trying to turn your stock R32 GTR into a Godzilla for the streets, you really don't have to worry about replacing the internals until you start to approach that four-figure horsepower number. However, there are two main flaws in these engines, one of which is an easy and quite obvious fix, and the second one you may not have even thought about. The first issue is the ceramic turbos that came stock on the R32 and R33 RB26 engines. They were actually known to be quite unreliable when you started to push the boost to make more power. This is simplified by going to a single turbo setup, with a modern, high-efficiency turbo from Garrett, Precision, or Borg Warner. These newer, more efficient turbos can get you huge power gains with very little loss in responsiveness, depending on how you spec your turbo size. The second issue comes with oiling. We already mentioned the larger oil pump collar on the R33 spec, but one of the main issues comes with when you're trying to drain all of that oil out of the head. A lot of times, once you go to a larger aftermarket oil pump gear, now you have a large supply of oil going to the engine head. But the design of the oil drains is not set up to be able to remove that much oil from the head and return it to the pan. So this introduces the problem of oil starvation due to the fact that all of your oil is sitting at the top of the engine head and can't return to the bottom end. Now there are multiple methods for solving this, ranging from simply removing the plugs in the head all the way to drilling out the stock drain ports. But once you get the oiling issue resolved, you'll be good to make anywhere from 6 to 800 horsepower with a good tune. The only remaining concern starts to arise when you're really pushing the power, and I'm talking over 1000 to a 1500 horsepower. When compared to something like the 2JZ, the RB block has relatively thin cylinder walls. This means that the block can actually be prone to twisting or even cracking due to the immense power being put out. Companies such as Platinum Racing have actually developed an engine brace that mounts directly onto the block to prevent damage under such astronomical forces. With this installed, your 2000 horsepower fully built R34 GTR will be setting drag strip records in no time. But that is going to wrap it up for this one guys, leave me a comment down below what you guys think about the RB26, the Skyline, and what engine or car you want me to talk about next. I've already got a whole bunch of them lined up, so make sure you hit that notification bell down below so you don't miss out when I post another video. If you enjoyed this one, then leave it a like down below. If you want to see more from me, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll see you guys on the next one.